today I'm going to be showing you how to create the most stunning bridal look of Nayantara who is a superstar in South India. To hydrate my skin, I'm going to be using the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream. This is a moisturizer. I'm applying a generous amount all over my face and neck, basically in areas where I will be using makeup. This feels luxurious on the skin. I have super sensitive skin and this does not irritate at all, although it has a little bit of fragrance. I just woke up and my eyes are a little puffy, so I'm going to be using something cooling under my eyes. This is the Tula Rose Glow Get It Cooling and Brightening Eye Balm. And this does two things for me. It's definitely very cooling. As soon as you apply it, you feel like you just took it out of the fridge. And second, it's very hydrating. And because it's a balm, it's so easy to apply. And to keep my lips hydrated, I'm using the Milani Rose Lip Balm. Time to color correct so we get that flawless skin. I'm going to be using the color corrector from EXA. This is in the shade Peach. I'm alternating between a flat shader brush from Folklore and my fingers to pat it down so there's no harsh edges left. And you can instantly see the difference. It neutralizes the blue undertones to bring my skin tone back to where it has to be. So why should you color correct before you apply a foundation or a concealer? Now, let's say I don't color correct and I just apply a foundation over my dark circles and patches. In areas where you have those dark circles and dark patches, the undertones are mostly blue. So the foundation is going to combine with those blue undertones and in those areas, it's going to look ashy or grayish in color. And for that reason, it's important to color correct and neutralize those areas, bring it back to your skin tone before you apply anything else over it. It's time to apply the foundation and for that, I'm going to be using the 2-in-1 Perfect Foundation by Milani in the shade 6. And the secret to seamless application is to mix it with a drop of face oil. And I'm going to be using the Prep and Brighten Rose Face Oil again by Milani. All I'm adding is one drop. I'm going to mix it and apply it. The brush that I'm using is the Real Techniques Foundation Brush. I'm going to link everything down below in the description box. So do check that out. And as you can see, it's so easy to apply this foundation, especially when you mix it with that drop of oil. It just goes up seamlessly. And if you observe closely, I'm not dragging or pulling on those bristles of the brush. The way I'm applying the foundation is by pressing it in. I'm almost using the brush like a sponge. When you drag the brush, the bristle hair can sometimes leave those marks on the foundation on your skin. And especially if you have a color corrector underneath, if you drag or pull the bristles, the color corrector can mix with the foundation and your foundation can start looking orange or peach in color. Now to chisel the face and get some structure. I hope it was that easy, but I can do it with makeup. I'm going to be using a deeper shade of concealer by ColourPop. This is in the shade 200N. This is extremely pigmented, so I'm going to be using very little in areas where my face naturally casts those shadows. And then I'm going to be blending it out with the same brush that I used for my foundation. Again, I'm going to repeat myself. I say this in every video, but for anybody who's new here, I use the same brush because there's going to be some residue of that foundation left in the brush. When you use the same brush without cleaning it, it's going to mix with that contour now and give you that seamless blend. Now, if you're going to be using a new brush for every makeup that you apply on your face, you have to put in that extra effort to blend it out with the previous product. Now, if you already have some residue left in it, it makes it so much more easier. Now, to contour the nose, I learned this hack from another creator on Instagram, Mermaidista. I'm going to link it down below in the description box. So go check her out and show her some support and love. It was so simple and easy. She just took some contour in the tips of her fingers and just slided it down the sides of her nose. This is such a fabulous trick and makes so much sense. I absolutely loved it. Next, I'm going to be using two different shades of concealers by Milani, 145 and 135. The shade 145 is what I'm using first. It's a true match to my skin tone. I'm going to be using this to conceal in areas where I have those dark circles, patches, as well as spots. If you're looking primarily to conceal any uneven skin tone, I would suggest using a concealer that's a true match to your skin tone. And then to highlight, I'm going to be using the shade 135, which is a lighter shade. And I'm going to be using this on the highest planes of my face. To blend this out, I'm using a smaller concealer brush. This is by Laura Geller. The key is to first create that structure on the face. It's not well blended and you don't have to worry about it. It'll all come together at the end. 
you just have to trust the process so we are using brushes now at the end when everything has to look seamless and well blended i'm going to be using a sponge i'm using a little bit more of the lighter shade to sculpt my jawline again blending out with the brush before i use a dry sponge not a wet sponge but a dry sponge to pat it all over my face so I get that seamless blend. And the reason I'm using a dry sponge is to get full coverage. It's going to absorb very little product inside of the sponge. But when you use a wet sponge, it's going to absorb more. A wet sponge is so much more easier to apply a product on the face. It goes up seamlessly, but we've already applied the products. All I'm looking to do now is blend them all together. And for that reason, I'm using a dry sponge. Now it's time to set and lock the base makeup so it doesn't move and it's a two-step process. First, I'm going to be using a translucent powder. This is by Laura Mercier. I'm dipping the sponge in the translucent powder and pressing it in areas where I applied the concealer. Because concealers tend to crease and I have those fine lines, I don't want that concealer to settle in the fine lines and crease. So by quickly setting it with a little bit of translucent powder, you will avoid the creasing. Now for the rest of the face to avoid flashbacks, I'm going to be using the Studio Fix Powder by MAC. This is a pressed powder. I'm going to be using a large powder brush to gently pat it on the rest of my face and that is going to bring all the shades on my face together it's going to even out everything as well as set my face and now for step two i'm going to be using a setting spray this is going to lock the base makeup and the one that i'm going to be using is the super setter by benefit cosmetics i love the setting spray because it has such a fine mist so when you spray it on your face it's going to evenly spread across your face and this is going to lock and seal everything. Your base makeup is not going to move throughout the day. On her eye, she went for a classic gold smoky eye and you can never go wrong with this eye makeup. I'm going to begin with my brows. Her brows are always clean and filled. And I'm going to be using an eyeshadow that's a close match to my brows. And I'm using an angled brush to fill it in. And while filling in the bottom portion of my brows, I'm going to thicken my brow just a tad bit near the arch because uh, she has pretty thick brows. Using some concealer, I'm going to clean up on the top part of my brows as well because her brows are so clean and I was compelled to do this. Also, I had a couple of stray hair in the front portion of my brows, so I'm just going to pull it out. I did not set my lid with a powder because I'm going to be using a metallic shade on my lid and it adheres better and there's more pigment payoff when you don't set your lids with powder. The palette that I'm going to be using is Love for Sale by House Labs. The gold on her lid almost had a green undertone so I'm going to be mixing Nina with Do I Love You and I'm going to be using this to set my lids. And the easiest way to apply it is press it with your finger and just for the corners to neaten it up you can use a flat shader brush. And in her crease, she had a deep brown shade. So I'm going to dip into So In Love with a small blending brush to carve out my crease. Again, slowly dabbing it and building that crease first. And I'm not going to be taking too much eyeshadow at a time. I'm just taking very little dipping back in the palette and slowly building upon that crease. And because I have hooded eyes, you can see my crease line passing right across my lid. I'm building a new crease above it in my socket line. When you press it in like this, it's going to pack that color and also blend out the edges. And after I've packed in that color, I'm going to slowly push some of that eyeshadow outward and upward to get a more seamless blend. Taking a little bit more of that brown eyeshadow to deepen the outer corner and to get a nice defined outer C. And I'm also going to be smoking it out in my lower lash line. Using the Aqua Resist Pencil by Makeup Forever, I'm going to tight line and I'm going to also roughly sketch out my top lash line. It doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going to be smudging it out anyway because she had a smoky liner. Using Let's Do It, which is a black eyeshadow, I'm going to smoke this out. I'm using a large angled brush to smoke this out and with a smaller smudging brush I'm going to use the black eyeshadow again to smoke out my lower lash line very close to my lashes. Using the NYX liquid liner I'm going to pull out a small wing and line my top lash line very close to the lashes because we still want to maintain that smoky liner look. Dipping into Dream Dancing to highlight my brow bones as well as inner corners using a flat shader brush by Colourpop. And then I'm going to finish up first curling my lashes. This is the Sally Hansen Curler. For mascara, I'm going to be using the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk. This is the Push Up Lashes Mascara. 
and for lashes i'm going to be using the tati lashes in rich af as i said before you can never go wrong with a classic gold smoky eye whether it's a festival whether it's an occasion you can never go wrong with this it looks good with every outfit indian western what have you it looks fantastic and i love the way this eye makeup look turned out i'm going to finish the rest of the makeup from the cuffs and lashes sculpted contoured and chiseled palette I'm going to dip into this beautiful bronzy shade to warm up my face. I love the way these shades melt into my skin. It's so easy to blend this out. Such a great quality product this is. She had a nice flush of rosiness on her cheeks. So I'm going to be using the Head Rush palette. This is by House Labs. First dipping into the blush. And I like to use it higher up on my cheekbones to get that sculpted lifted effect. Next, I'm going to dip into the highlighter and I'm going to lightly apply it on the highest planes of my face, just like she had. To my non-Indian friends and anybody who is not familiar with Nayantara, I would ask you to do a simple Google search and you will see how stunning she is. She recently got married just a couple of days ago and she looks absolutely stunning. On her lips, she had a muted earthy brown shade. So I'm going to be using the Ofra liquid lipstick in Kaye Ocho, one of my favorites. The hair was super simple. I kept the center part, pulled all the hair back, neatened it and tied a bun. To finish this look, I have my red sari on, jewelry, some mogra in my hair and let's not forget the nose pin on both sides. Her jewelry was breathtaking. It almost looked very Victorian. What I have is what I made basically. <laughs> Most of the jewelry that I wear in my tutorials are made by me and I'm so honored to be recreating her makeup look. But I really enjoyed creating this tutorial for you. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Let me know in comments. And if you like this tutorial, please don't forget to thumbs up. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing to watch more videos like these. I love you guys so much. And I will see you soon with a brand new one. Bye, guys.